is Pastor Sue Ulrich at Locust Grove United Church of Christ in York, Pennsylvania. We're so happy to have you here with us today. We invite you to worship with us. So let's get our bulletins and begin our service now. The invitation is given to every person by Jesus Christ. Come to me, follow me, be my disciples. We come to this place, to this time, at the invitation of Jesus Christ. In the name of Christ, we accept the invitation to discipleship. In the name of Christ, as his disciples, we worship and praise God. In the midst of a world where cruelty abounds, we proclaim the God of compassion. In the midst of despair that threatens to swallow up whole lives, whole peoples, we proclaim the God of hope. In the midst of indifference and apathy, we proclaim the God of love. Come, let us worship together and share our witness of God's living presence in the world. And let us join now in our opening hymn, Your Ways Are Not Our Own. Receiving, giving to 
in our opening prayer. Loving, Loving God, God, we, we come, come into your, your presence today knowing that you call us to follow you. We bring our commitments and our works before you because yours is the only standard that matters. We open ourselves to your direction, confident that you see value and purpose in our lives that we ourselves cannot discern. Lead us and guide us in this time of worship. For we gather in your name. Amen. We yearn, O Christ, for wholeness and for your healing touch. Too long have we felt helpless, our burden seemed too much. Forgetting all pretenses, we make our pleadings heard. In hope and expectation, await your gracious word. We long to have companions who travel by our side, strong friends to call and answer, with whom we are allied. As we lift up each other, when struggles lay us low, Community develops, our faith and caring grow. We need your loving presence, O Christ of Galilee, a presence that revives us and sets our spirits free. No longer are we fearful, your love pervades each place. Empower us with your courage to claim your healing grace. Our Old Testament lesson for today comes to us from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go all through it. Jonah started into the city going a day's journey and he proclaimed 40 more days and Nineveh will be destroyed. The Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. And from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning with verse 14. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come and follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father in the boat with the hired men and followed him. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. And will you pray with me? 
Gracious God, we thank you that we can gather for worship today. We thank you and praise you for all that you have done in our lives and for all that you will do. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts today through the words of song, through the words of scripture, and through the words you have given me. And may all that we do and all that we say bring you honor and glory and praise. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. When our children were much younger, we used to throw some of the best birthday parties. Now I'm going to try not to brag, but we threw epic parties. And our parties weren't just fun and exciting, they had a great theme that pulled the whole party together. The food, the games, and the craft were connected to the party theme. We had a Goosebumps and Barbie party, Bowling and Little Mermaid party, to name a few. And we had a lot of fun putting these parties together. I enjoyed decorating the cakes and getting the decorations and party gifts that fit the theme. And I always tried to make or find an invitation that not only fit our theme, but helped to set the mood for the party. After all, invitations are a very important part of a party. We all like getting invitations. It makes us feel important and special and lets us know somebody cares. Invitations are important. Jesus knew that invitations were important, although he, of course, didn't mail any. He spoke them to the four disciples mentioned in our gospel lesson for today and to many, many more people. Jesus, I believe, loved to give out invitations so what was he inviting people to? A dinner? A party? Jesus was inviting people to follow him. After his cousin John was put in prison, Jesus continued his message of repentance and telling all that the kingdom of God is near. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee and observed Simon, who he would later call Peter, and his brother Andrew casting their net into the water, Jesus invited them to follow him. He told them they would be a different type of fishermen. They would now fish for people. No fancy paper invitation, yet his invitation sure fit the theme of his ministry. Follow me, and we will invite others to join us. Follow me, and I will teach you how to send out your own invitations as you fish for others, as you invite others into the kingdom of God. Now, no one knows for sure if Peter or Andrew knew of Jesus or had met him before this time. Some think they probably had heard Jesus speak or teach. In Mark's gospel, though, we don't see any contact between them before this. So it's amazing that they drop their nets, the nets they were casting into the water, and just get out of their boat and follow him. Immediately, at once, they left their notes, their nets, and follow him, the scripture tells us. There is no thinking or discussion between the brothers. No, I have to think about it or I'll get back with you. No, just at once, they left their nets and their boats and followed him. I am not the type of person to make a spur-of-the-moment decision like they did. I need to know all the facts pertinent to the situation I need to look things up on the internet and be sure that this is what I'm going to do. Peter and Andrew, it seemed, didn't need to find anything out. They knew what they were doing. Something in his invitation spoke to them, and they followed him. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, 
not only left their boat behind, but their father and the hired help to follow Jesus. They were preparing their nets, and the next thing we know, they are off following him. But not everyone had such an easy time responding to an invitation, following a word from the Lord. Jonah sure didn't. Although in our passage from the Old Testament, we see that Jonah preached to the people of Nineveh and that they repented, but that's sure not how it started. The small book of Jonah is mostly written about how Jonah decided he wouldn't do what he was told to do by God, and that he jumped on a boat to Tarshish and ended up in the belly of a very large fish. God gave him three days there to think things over, and then Jonah gave the invitation he was supposed to give, repent. Forty more days, and Nineveh will be destroyed. So why didn't Jonah want to do what God told him to do? Because he knew the Ninevites were the enemies of the Israelites, and he didn't care if they were saved or not. So he took off and thought he could hide from God. I can't say Jonah was invited to share this word from the Lord, because he was told to do it. But this reluctant prophet didn't do it just the same. When Jesus invited the four men on the shore of the Sea of Galilee that day to follow him, he also invited them to fish for people to invite others to join them. He invited them to something totally new and something that required a lot of them. We wonder how they could do that. Just leave everything behind and follow. I like what Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor writes. She calls it a miracle story, saying, This is no story about the power of human beings to change their lives, to leave everything behind and follow. This is a story about the power of God to walk right up to a quartet of fishermen and work a miracle, creating faith where there was no faith, creating disciples where there were none just a moment before. This is not a story about us, she continues. This is a story about God and God's ability, not only to call us, but also to create us as people who are able to follow. Able to follow because we cannot take our eyes off the one who calls us. Because he interests us more than anything else in our lives. Because he seems to know what we hunger for. And because he seems to be food. The invitation Jesus gave to those four fishermen was one they answered quickly and it changed their lives. Did it make their lives easier? Perhaps not. Did it make them happier? Probably. But they weren't just called to follow Jesus. There was something else they were called to do. They were called to be fishers of people. While Jesus was here on earth with, with them, they were learning what it meant to follow him. They listened to him teach and pray. They witnessed the miracles and the love he had and shared with everyone. But when Jesus left, they knew they were called. They were invited to begin fishing, to begin inviting others to come to know Jesus too. And we know that was a challenge for them. And I know it is certainly a challenge for you and me. When we think we cannot do this, when we look at our own failings and faults, sins and problems, remember who these first fishermen were. Remember how they were called, invited by Jesus, knowing they would fall in doubt, knowing they would deny and betray him, knowing they would abandon him, and yet they were called and to follow 
and invite others to just the same. And so you and I, even though we aren't perfect either, it is that miracle that Reverend Taylor spoke of. God will work through us and in us. For too often, you and I have made such a point of not being pushy with our faith that it has kind of backfired. Attendance in churches has declined over the years, and many, many people do not know the Lord. Yet how will others know the joy of following Jesus unless we invite them? A minister was once lamenting that the average person in his denomination invited someone to church once every 18 years. A sigh of relief was heard from the back row when one older member said to a neighbor, Whew, I don't have to do that for another three years. Let's not do that. Let's you and I be fishers of people. Now I realize we are not meeting in our sanctuary right now, but we are still meeting every week. We can invite friends and family members to watch our service. And when we get back in our sanctuary to join us on Sunday morning, we can invite others to know the joy we have in following Jesus. We can invite them to be a part of Locust Grove Church. And we can share just how much our faith means to us and why we worship every week. We all like getting invitations. It makes us feel important and special and lets us know somebody cares. Invitations are important. Yet there is something about invitations. Sometimes they come with an RSVP. I believe Jesus' invitation does. We need to respond. We need to respond to the call to follow Jesus. We need to respond to the call to invite others and be fishers of people. Let's not be like Jonah. Let's not hide from God and keep our faith to ourselves. There are so many people who need and long to know the love of Jesus. Let's live our lives as an invitation for him. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer concerns and joys, I noticed we have a birthday this week, Charlie Glessner. So let's sing happy birthday to Charlie. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Charlie. Happy birthday to you. And let us continue to pray for those who have COVID-19 and for the vaccines. I know a lot of people are starting to get their vaccine. I've had my first one and pray that they truly work against this virus. And let us pray for our nation at this time of transition. I know when I volunteer at the well, where my daughter is the assistant director, the well food pantry, we know there's a lot of people in need. So let's pray for those who have food insecurity. There are so many who are without jobs right now. Every day we see the numbers of those signing up for unemployment and it's just staggering. So let's continue to pray for and reach out to those folks. And pray for those who are homeless, especially in this cold weather. We certainly must think about them and pray for them every day, but we think of them especially when the weather gets cold like today. So let us go before our Lord in prayer. 
Gracious God, we are so thankful that you have invited us to follow you. And while we know sometimes we eagerly do it, and other times we back off a little bit, we thank you for that invitation. Keep inviting us, keep reminding us to follow, Lord, to make you the most important priority in our lives. But we know that following is not the only thing you want us to do. You want us to invite, to be fishers of people, to invite others so that they too may know the joy we, they, we have in following you. The peace that you give to us, Lord, in times of difficulties and struggles. The joy we have in knowing that a love like yours surrounds us and fills us. The joy in knowing that you are our Savior. You know that we can lean on you and call on you, Lord, in times of difficulties and struggles. Give us the courage, Lord. Maybe it's through an email, maybe a phone call. Right now we know we're not to gather together. It's important not to do that in the midst of this virus. But if we open our hearts to you and ask you to use us to speak to others, tell us what avenue we should use, Lord. How we can be fishers of people and invite them to know you better, and just to get to know you, Lord. And help us to draw closer to you. We lift up Charlie this week and we thank you for his birthday. And we pray that you bless him with a wonderful day. We lift up those who are suffering with COVID-19 and those who are in quarantine. We pray that this vaccine works and makes a difference. We pray for our nation during this time of transition. That you would guide the leaders of our, our country that you would guide all of us, Lord, in living our lives in the best way possible that shows that we follow you. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with those who are homeless. It's hard to imagine what that is like when we go home at night and we sit in our warm homes and we think of those who have no shelter. Help them to find shelter, Lord. Help them to bring warmth to them. Thank you for places like the Well Food Pantry and our food banks here in York. For so many people have had to go there because jobs are lost. Many, many people do not have a job right now. And these are difficult times. Let us not forget, Lord, to pray for them and to give when we are able to help those who are struggling right now, because many are. Help us to remember the homeless and those who are food insecure and to give every time you lay it on our hearts, Lord. Thank you for the blessings you do indeed give to us. May we always share them. And thank you for bringing us together in this time of worship. We're so thankful, Lord, for this technology that brings us together. So let us, as your body of Christ at Locust Grove, join together as we pray the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to continue to bring your offering to the church, drop it off at the office, or mail it in to help our church to continue ministering as God calls us to. So let us join now in our offertory prayer. O God, from whom comes all the good things we enjoy, we offer our gifts in the spirit of those long ago who opened costly treasures before Jesus. We give in response to your generosity 
and your love and concern for all. May all who are in need experience the unsearchable riches of Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit, even as their physical needs are met. May we be co-workers with Christ, whose sacrifice brought our redemption. Amen. I always look forward to the Sunday that we can sing this song, so please join me in our closing hymn, You Have Come Down to the Lakeshore. Silence. We go in peace to serve, love, and serve the Lord. 
In the name of Christ, amen. God bless you all, and thank you for being with us today.